Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regular scheduled meeting of the uh, Sunderland Select Board. Uh, I'd like to call the order at uh, 637 or so, uh, September 13th, 2021. Uh, first order of business is approval of minutes of August 30th. I motion we approve the minutes. Crystal has uh, made a motion to approve. I have second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Jeff, 2-0. Uh, David will not be with us this evening. Um, under new business, we were going to, we do have a new uh, business in town. They asked to uh, come in October, so we'll put that on hold right now. The next thing is we have a schools update, and we have Ben. Would you like to give us an update? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can, Ben. Great. Thanks for, thanks for having me tonight. Um, it's a, uh, excited to give an update for the 21-22 school year. We are off to a very smooth start. Um, as, as you are probably aware, there is no remote option this year, so we are fully in person. Um, we still have many of the same safety protocols in place that we, had, that we did last year. Um, specifically around COVID, such as the pool testing, which is for asymptomatic individuals. We have the symptomatic testing when someone gets sick at school and needs to be tested. And then a new protocol this year is called test instead. And really the, the thing behind that is if a student is considered a close contact to a positive case, they no longer need to quarantine. They would come into school each morning and receive a, a rapid reflex test. And um, as long as it's negative, then they continue at school. And that, and that continues for seven days um, while they're still monitoring symptoms. And then they would be out of the test and state, test and state protocol. Um, the state has done a great job this year in making the whole sign-up process much more user-friendly. So now when a family chooses to sign up for um, the COVID testing, they're actually signing up for all three components. Excellent. And a couple other, yeah, absolutely. And a couple other changes is that now, uh, last year we had lunch outside in the gymnasium, in the cafeteria, and in the classrooms all simultaneously. And we are back in the cafeteria this year. <laughs> And we do have assigned seats and fewer students at each table, but it's definitely a little bit closer to um, what we had experienced prior to COVID uh, hitting us so hard. So all in all, it's been a very positive start. We, we had actually across the district, we had a high amount of turnover amongst faculty members, um, all from career changes to retirement to staff members moving within the building to different positions. So, um, you know, this is a big welcome to our new faculty members at FDF, and also a, a thank you to our, our veterans for really showing everyone the Sunderland way and making it such a smooth and positive start for, for our new, new faculty and families. But all in all, it's been a very positive start. Uh, Peter, Jessica, do you like to add anything? My kids are thrilled to be back at school. They love Sunderland Elementary. That's all I have to say today. <laughs> well, uh, the other thing I'd add would be that uh, we have our first school committee meeting next week of the school year. And so at that point, we'll get further updates and so on. And then I'll report back to you if there's anything there that uh, is something you ought to know. Um, Jessica, it's, it's interesting that you say that. And Peter, about being back. Um, the, just some people wonder why we are meeting in the town hall um, with our mask on and and I would say um, our boards just our, what, what our board had considered um, we, we could go back to remote but we believe that if our schools are at in session they're wearing their mask it's important for us to also show the same commitment as our children are showing and we can support them as well with our mask on um, and we can conduct business for, for us it, it's 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 really about 
the importance of, of moving moving us forward and that's why we're we're back here and and that's why you guys are at your school right now so and and hopefully we're gonna we're gonna beat this thing very soon and I just read a very interesting article about three town or three states um, that have two-thirds of the population and it's uh, Vermont Massachusetts and Connecticut that are vaccinated um, and I think that speaks volumes of our our communities here in New England so so good um, Ben I know um, just also update everybody that you and Jeff are talking um, about uh, a lot of things about uh, a couple grants that you're looking to propose that you're both working on uh, you're also looking at ARPA fund funding um, coming up there's going to be a uh, there's going to be a, uh, a hearing um, that S Senator Comerford um, has been in sending out and this first one is dealing with health care mental health substance abuse disorders public health and and human services um, education is going to be a little bit later in the year um, but Ben and Jeff are talking about that so the Sunderland board wants to be putting together a some written testimony and and we, we figure it's really important to put the education component with those monies as well so that'll be coming up shortly and we'll read our letter before we send that out just but um, school committee Peter and Jessica just let you know um, there's things that you guys are looking for those funding please let Ben know about it so he can get with uh, Jeff and we can we can put a, a an effective letter together to send and enter it into testimony okay Peter yeah I, I know that uh, you guys have started talking about the ARP funds and, and how they might be used and 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 I uh, you know alerted Darius and his team to the fact that you guys are starting that process and so he's already been working on stuff that that you know issues with the building that, that might be candidates for for some of those funds because as you know that building is you know it's all of, all of the parts that wasn't renewed after the roof fell in is, is more than 30 years old now and um you know it, it's uh there's some there's going to be some issues that will be hard to deal with on our normal as part of our normal capital budget and so this might be this is certainly a time to have a look at these larger items and and, and at least give some thought to whether they would be good candidates for arp money well I, I would I would also hope Peter that um, why why we're looking at that that we would consider we we would consider uh, climate change also and and trying to uh, a ensure that the building is green as green as possible and with the heating I, I mean you know and and maybe there's a way you know we had talked in the recent past about the boiler Ben I mean you're probably an expert now on boilers and they probably never taught you in school that you need to know so much about boilers and cafeterias and stoves but that's actually part of the job of the principal is is to know that stuff and and I would think you know there's a lot of discussions going on right now about long term about um, you know getting away from fossil fuels um, I know we do right now we do burn oil um, you know may, maybe you know looking at geothermal uh, we, we do have it at the library now maybe that's you know because you're right we have to think about our next our next step and we'll, and and maybe those are those are items that we can look at also so we can look at you know if we have to re renew the power you know we the the way we heat the building well maybe we look at at uh, the way we heat the building also cut down on our emissions so but those are just things that we can start thinking about as well you know I don't I don't know if we have faculty or staff now that use um uh electric cars but they're saying by 2035 they want to do away with the internal combustion engine selling them new so that means we have to start preparing um the infrastructure for for that as well so maybe that's something that we want to look at the, the elementary school as well so yeah yeah i i just wanted to clarify there sort of two pot there are many different pots of arpa funds but the um the testimony that we were talking about is so municipalities got a certain amount um, and then the state also got a certain amount so this is 
to help the state think about how they want to spend their allocation. And then we have the separate pot of money um, that's coming directly to Sunderland. So this would, I think, be more general. Hey, uh, capital improvements to schools would be a great way to spend state ARPA funds. And then maybe we would have more locally or if they decide not to go in that direction. So I just wanted to clarify that there are several different pots of ARPA money and how it's being distributed. Um, also, Ben, I don't know, before we let you go, do you want to talk about the ADA grant? Uh, I was, or I can talk about it later in my update, but. Sure, I, then maybe we'll uh, tag team this one. Um, so uh, Jeff and I have been putting together a proposal for the ADA grant, and the application will be sent in shortly, and we will find out in December, approximately, whether or not we are approved for this uh, round of funding. We are submitting two different grant proposals. One would be for the safety surface, and this would include the port in place rubber surface and the asphalt surfaces, totaling approximately $52,000. Um, and then the other would be for the main play structures. Uh, which uh, are approximately $65,000. So we've um, been collaborating back and forth. We had a phone conversation, Jeff, I think it was last week, with the grant coordinator um, from the Office of Disabilities over in Boston. And uh, that gentleman gave us some recommendations um, to, in terms of making our application look a little bit um, better um, and, and stronger. And then we've also sought uh, feedback from our school community as well. So all in all, it's going, it's going well, and um, we're we're pretty cautiously optimistic that uh, hopefully some some funding will come through with this. And you know, once again, I do want to thank the Sunderland Towns people for earmarking two hundred thousand dollars to go towards this um, project, uh, the Early Childhood Playground project. And just to let the town people know that we are actively seeking as many different funding sources as possible to make this project uh, a reality. Yeah. Um, the the only thing that I would add to that, and I think correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but we we think that if we get this grant, we'll be in good shape funding wise for the project. Um, you know, for the for the full project, which is great. Um, it, you know, I, I know we sort of put Ben on the spot, but he's been working really hard for a number of years um, to to get donations and volunteers and um, help reduce the cost because it, it's playgrounds. I talk about things you never thought you'd learn in a job, but are incredibly expensive, and especially uh, to make them accessible. Um, it, you know, it, it's a great project. So we're, we're very hopeful that uh, we'll get at least one of these two grants that we're applying for. Um, but I just wanted to, to commend Ben for the work he's put into this. Uh, the deadline to apply is October 8th. Um, you know, we got some really good feedback. I think we have a, a strong application. So um, we wanted to at least make sure the select board was aware of what we were applying for, our approach of, and, and by the way, Obviously, we wouldn't be applying if you couldn't apply for multiple <laughs> grants um, and, and potentially be approved. But um, our hope is to submit that a, as quickly as possible. And um, I think there's a question in the audience. Jessica? Thanks. I've seen these grant applications. They do look really strong. I just had a question. Um, I know Natalie Blay has been saying that she got an earmark put into the house state bill hundred thousand dollars for Sunderland parks and playgrounds do we know if that made it through to the final did it make it through the governor or or did it it could have been eliminated in reconciliation or a governor line item veto i think my understanding is that it did make it we have not actually received the funds yet so we're not counting on anything that we don't actually have in our accounts but we are very hopeful that, um, and, and I put a bug in the 
treasurer and accountant's ears of, hey, if, if 100 grand throws up somewhere, please let us know this is what we're planning on using it for. Um, but yes, I, I think that, that the understanding is that it is in, in the governor's budget, um, but it hasn't been released yet. Okay, and, and is it designated for a specific project in the town yet? Uh, it, it is designated for parks and playgrounds. Um, I think that we are going to, you know, I, one of the challenges that, that we faced, and, and by the way, um, I, I should say a huge thank you from the whole community to Representative Blaze that she did this, uh, that's huge, um, is, is that we're waiting, uh, the construction material costs especially wood went up dramatically and fortunately we've seen them come back down but uh, the Riverside Park project has a lot of wood material in that project and so I, I think that we're going out to bid um, for the hor uh, vertical construction in a couple of weeks and the hope is that that the procurement and everything for that will be wrapped up by, um, I'd say, early to mid-November, and then we'll have a better idea of what that's going to cost. But my hope is um, to to be able to support both projects to completion uh, with those funds. Great, that's what I'm looking to hear. Thanks. So, I I I'd like. Um, Ben to take a back seat for a second, and I'd like to talk to Peter and, and Jessica. I, I just want to note, um, it started with Margaret um, Nardowitz, continue up through Sherry, and now with, with uh, Jeff, um, how close um, the school and the town are working together. And that, I, I mean, we've been waiting, I mean, that, Peter's been along time finance committee and kind of knew at one point 20 years ago the 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 town and the schools the only time they talked at it at all was when they were presented the budget in February um, but through the leadership of Ben and Darius um, it's a and and sitting I, I just can't express what it feels like to be sitting in the chair here and listening to Ben and Jeff talk about their communications. And I also get, we get emails on a regular occurrence um, about the conversations that are going on. It's something that I know when Scott was here and before Scott with Mike Wisman and before Mike with John Fields and, and Tony Leger, they always wanted that communication that we're getting now. But I really think it, it's, it's a partnership between the towns and the school, but you need strong leadership from the school, and we have it in Ben and Darius right now. Um, and for Jeff and Ben to have that communication, they are bodes well for the town. Because when we work together, we're much stronger. Because Jessica, what we can do is just do what you said. We, Jeff and Ben can talk to Natalie or Joe or before that Steve Kulik or Stan Rosenberg and they can talk in a unified voice and that is so important when you're talking to people on the state level. So thank you guys. Peter? Yeah, I just agree with you all heartedly, Tom, and uh, uh, I, I, I particularly want to thank Jeff for the work that he's been doing um, throughout this whole COVID time, really basically since he got here for all these issues that are the school issues but they're just they're part of really just town issues and 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 getting the the school people together with him and talking and talking and yelling over and making plans and all the stuff that they ought to be doing they're really actually doing and it's just great to see and and, and jeff i can't thank you enough for 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 the, the spirit you brought to this which is just a can-do spirit and you know it, it's it, there's just you know, we deal with everything on a whole town basis, and I think that's the way it has to be, and, and uh, you know, that's the way it, it will be in the future. So, anyway, I, I agree with you completely, Tom. That's your attaboy for the day. Thank you both. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, Ben, anything else? 
Good. All right. No. Nope. Um, please, please invite me back anytime. Oh, we will. I'm sure we'll find something to worry, complain about. <laughs> I'm sure. Jeffrey, all set. Uh, I just, while we're on the topic of schools, wanted yeah. to mention that uh, last week the town administrators from Waitley, Conway, Deer, Deerfield, and Sunderland met with the superintendent. Just a similar type of thing. What's going on at the schools? Um, what they're thinking about? We talked about. Um, the desire i think from all of us to have a more long range capital planning process um, i think the first capital assessments for frontier are, are coming soon and it's very small but thinking about how we do it strategically um, for the additional investments uh, moving forward and then for each of the individual elementary schools um, we also started a conversation I think is a longer term one, but about sort of the district formula and uh, again, a learning process for me, but how, how that came about. And I guess there's a standard formula and then you can do your own. And, um, you know, it, and the idea was how to uh, sort of flatten the peaks and valleys that we sometimes see in the cost of education at the district level and how that's a lot driven by the state formula but if there are things that we can do locally in the in the regional agreement to sort of level that so there's a clearer uh, expectation heading into budget season of what those assessments are going to look like and um, spread the cost so we, we've started having that conversation but that's obviously a longer term conversation okay good all right, next up, um, deficit coverage. Thanks, guys. Yes, so uh, when we met two weeks ago, I introduced the topic, um, and the following evening, the uh, Finance Committee uh, approved the deficit coverage recommendations of the town accountant um, and so it also needs to be approved by the select board uh, were there any do you want me to pull it up were there any questions no I, 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 I was looking I'm looking at it right now while you're looking at I'll mention uh, and I apologize if I mispronounce her last name, Sarah Simorowski. Simor Not bad. Close? Simorowski's good. Okay. Was, uh, is the new chair of the finance committee, so just wanted to say congratulations to, to Sarah and a thank you for, for stepping up and um, offering to take on that responsibility. All right, so they're all, they're all set then. Um. Do you want to vote and then there's yep. something to sign? Okay. So, so basically you, you just want to, you want to give a brief rundown of what, what was happening? Right. So um, essentially the, this is to close out fiscal year 21. Sometimes accounts go into deficit for various reasons. Other accounts have a surplus. Peter could probably do a better job than I could explaining the difference, but um, you know, and, and then at the end of the year to, to balance out the, the accounts in deficit, we look at the accounts that have a, a positive amount and sort of do a little, a little shift just to cover uh, the balances. So that's all it is to close out the year. So, so basically, did this happened a few, uh, they changed the law. Actually, when, when uh, Governor Baker, one of, one of his one of his first things was he, and this was a, a concern of a lot of cities and towns because um, cities and towns in Massachusetts have had a very, very strict accounting practice. So we'd be going back to town meeting to, to just, if one, one account was overspent, we'd have to get the money. And, and now it's a, actually allows us to do, try to, try to mon manage our budgets a lot a lot closer so it, it it was a nice change but that being said um to go through COVID and only have the minor changes that we're talking about is pretty amazing i think so um i i would entertain a motion i accept. motion we accept the deferent okay we have yes. a uh 
Uh, motion made, I second um, to adjust the deficit coverage. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Jeff, we got two zero on that. Thank you. Okay, the next up is a marijuana host community agreement process. Yeah. Um, just wanted to bring it back. I, I haven't heard anything uh, that would require immediate action, but I wasn't sure if there was any questions about the proposed process. Um, I guess I'll open it up to the public too, <laughs> if the public had any questions, but um, any anything that, that the select board um, wanted to see, thought it was a good process, wants to formalize that that's our process, wants to, keep it as an informal process just to allow uh, allow potential marijuana retailers or cultivators to have an understanding of what they would go through. And then, you know, the, the benefit of not officially adopting anything is that if we figure out something isn't working well, we can just tweak it. Um, not that it's a huge lift to, to change a policy, but um, the basic procedure would be an introductory meeting with the select board where we, you would meet the company, learn about their organization, uh, the types of products they would they anticipate selling, their location, um, any you know positive impacts that they planned for the community, whether or not that's volunteer service hours, um, participating. I, th I think I think it's in <laughs> Northampton. There's a uh, uh, one of the companies. Um, sponsored a bike share location or something like that um, and obviously they would need to go through their approvals but the uh, select board would appoint a member to serve on the negotiating committee with me or would appoint me to do it or however you want to go about that negotiate a host community agreement um, oh I think I'm skipping a step they would have to have a, a uh, I'm blanking on the name, a community meeting um, where they introduce themselves to the community as well and the community has an opportunity to ask questions, uh, get more information about hours, employees, things like that. Um, and then we would negotiate the host community agreement. Once that has been negotiated successfully, uh, they would come back for a meeting where the entire select board, uh, that member of the select board would um, present the host community agreement to the entire board, which would then approve and sign it, assuming everything went smoothly. Um, and that would allow the, the cannabis company to move forward with the state application process. That's what you got written down here. Is there anyone truly interested at this point? Uh, I would say that in my time here, I've gotten uh, two inquiries that were more than cold calls saying, hey, we're, you know, they followed up a couple times and I think that there is one that is seriously interested, yes. So, I don't know. My thought is to keep it informal until there's a true need, because you can always we can always learn from the neighboring communities, right? That's right. So I mean, when somebody really wants to start that process, I think yep. at least right. my thought is that's when it's yep. make it more formal. That's uh, one good thing, Crystal, that we have is that Jeff was involved with the, uh, when they did it in Amherst. And for, for instance, in, in part of the model, there, there are certain things that, that are included. There's annual payments to the town that, uh, there's also community impact fees. Um, we, we have uh, ability to, um, you know, regulate, the, they, there's connection fees, inspection fees. Um, I, I think we have an opportunity to do well um, that and make sure that the business, 
the business can succeed and we also can succeed as a town as well. So I, I think there, there's, there's good and bad. And, and, and you're right, other towns have it. We don't have to, you know, it, I, I, I don't think I would want it to be one of the first communities, but I think right now that there's, a, there's, enough, there's enough information out there right now so that we don't, we don't have to be the pioneers. So I think that's good. And uh, just something that, that came up since the last meeting is and related to my experience in Amherst. Um, there was a company that opened for recreational in Amherst that has since bought out another company that has three licenses. So you're only allowed to have three adult use licenses and they actually stopped serving the recreational market in Amherst, which is an issue because that's the taxable product. So I think one of the things that I would want to do in our host community <laughs> agreements is say, you know, have some something that, that addresses that impact because I think that the town's expectation when they entered the host community agreement is this company was going to be in existence for five years and we could sort of estimate what the revenue was going to be and they started thinking about that. Um, and so I, I haven't figured out how exactly I would deal with that in the host community agreement, but some sort of, um, you know, liquidated damages clause or uh, something that, that wouldn't necessarily be punitive, but would m make the town whole for, you know, the, the expectation um, is something that I'd like to tweak before it's finalized, but. Yeah, and, and, and again, when you, when you look at, you know, your, your successors and how, how those are assigned, those are, all, those are all important topics to address. Yeah. And, and, and understanding that there's people out there to start businesses so that they can sell them. Yep. And, 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 and unfortunately in the cannabis industry, I believe most of the people sell a lot of cash, a lot of cash business because of some of the federal laws. So there, there's, it, it may be a little bit diff, more difficult for certain people to get in and or stay in. So anyway, but just to let you, you know, the town know is that we're starting to hear that there may there may be some activity on that, and we're, we're trying to get ready for that also, Crystal. Yep. Okay. All right, uh, Jeff. Use of ARPA funds. Yeah. So I think I presented this aug or the first meeting in August, maybe about a month ago, um, and you asked me to go back and talk to the department heads and, and update the list. And I did, there were, there were a couple other suggestions for potential uses of the local ARPA funds, the funds that were distributed directly to us. Um, and before I get into that, I should mention that at the time, there was about $700,000 for Sunderland that was allocated to Franklin County. Um, and we weren't sure how that was going to be distributed. They figured that out. We're going to get it directly. In fact, we've already gotten half of it. Um, so I think the, the again, there's no immediate need to spend the funds we have until the end of 2024. Um, and we have, for, for those listening that, that weren't at the meeting in August, I think we have uh, we're anticipated to get just over a million dollars between what we received and what we're expected to receive next year. It's two tranches a year apart. Um, and there are certain categories you can spend in. But I think that one other point is I've had discussions with several other communities. What I'm hearing is that the reporting requirements are pretty onerous, um, unlike the coronavirus relief funds where the federal government gave it to the state and then the state said, okay, here's how you just report to us. We're now reporting to the federal government. So it's a lot more stringent, less flexible to say, hey, can we do this? Less back and forth. Um, so I've been talking to other communities about potentially hiring a shared position that can be paid for out of ARPA funds um, to do some amount of management of those funds, make sure that we're using them for eligible expenses, um, doing the proper accounting so that there, there's no issue on the back end um, as far as we didn't use the, the funds properly. Good. Actually, that's smart. 
So hopefully, hopefully it'll work out. Um, we've started having those discussions, but I think that, you know, one of the, one of the reasons that I brought it up is there are certain immediate expenses that I think are eligible and the primary one in, in my mind, and it's a good chunk of money would be the, the emergency radios for police and fire. Um, again, I don't think it's a big issue. We, we um, allocated funds, town meeting allocated funds through the capital improvement plan and through a separate warrant article. So we have funds to pay for it. Um, but it might, it, if we choose to use ARPA funds, it would affect how much we have available in the capital budget for next year. Mm. So uh, just something to, to keep in mind. Well, but it makes, but it makes, Jeff, it actually makes total, it's, it's a, in a way, it's, it's perfect timing for us because to get the necessary radios is a very expensive proposition. So, and, and, and not only, but it would it'd make it so that you could, you could get repeaters also, put the repeaters where you need them and the base units where you need them versus piecing it together over, a, a, you know, five or seven, eight, ten years. You could do it on a quicker schedule. So, yeah, very good. Okay. So, I, I guess, sorry, what, one more question on that. So, some communities are setting up, I guess they're calling Ar them ARPA advisory committees um, to recommend to the select board how to use the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. And that can include, you know, a, a health agent or a board of health representative, somebody from the select board, somebody from the town, police, fire. Um, the, and I, I just wanted to mention that because I, I know other communities, that's an, an approach other communities have used. It's not something we necessarily have to do, um, but I wanted to make sure that you were aware of that option. I'm certainly comfortable presenting the options that staff would like to see the, the funds used for. Are you, are, are you ready for that yet? To, to talk about the options mm. or or would you or or is it better to kind of get kind of line up options and to discuss the options versus just throwing a lot of things out um i i i think that so prioritizing what i think what what staff thinks is the best use of the funds and then presenting that um i am not ready to do that yet yeah i, I think that I, I need to take a look at what's available today and then because again we get the different tranches and how do we spend it uh, yeah, and, and I, th I think I think that's a I, I I was for a while I've been thinking about a committee um, but but sometimes sometimes it's it's better to to better define for the committee you know educational health building infrastructure roads climate change whatever it is and and it's better to kind of take take some of the fuzz out of it and more or less more more focus um and you could always go in other directions but you know and the people there but have have something that you start out with is it may be a better and better use of everyone's time also yeah Absolutely. So, so yeah, to find I, I, some of the projects in each of those broader categories. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, so I can see that. Okay. I can see that. Sure. I, absolutely. But we're not ready to spend that money yet, anyway. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. What do you think, Crystal? I agree. I think you know, once you're ready to start spending it and stuff, I think a committee of people to look at it is is worthwhile but you know to start forming all this before no we we can know. we can actually at, we can ask I, I mean jeff is talking to uh, the staff right. anyways right, right. And, and we can have and and we can have town people if there's there's things that, that our residents are are looking at you know potential they, they're more than welcome to send you know send those to us also or come in to talk to you or, or write you an email or write us an email and that's fine yeah. um but, but I, I think you, you have to get that information and then weed through it a little bit 
and 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 the cream will come and the cream will rise in that that at that time. Okay, I like that, Jeff. Um, select board updates. All right. Um, had a, right before this meeting had a personnel committee meeting. Um, when do you have time for supper? I choked down some food between these two. <laughs> The rest of it sitting in this chair right here since David's not here. <laughs> so we talked with the um, head of the library adults about adult service benefits. Um, she's got some takeaways that she's going to follow up with on those. Talked about parental leave. Again, she has some takeaways she's going to follow up with on that. And then we discussed, um, you know, determining COLA for the next fiscal year and no real set in stone determinations made but you know we're going to meet again in a couple of weeks and talk about it some more have you talked about uh, evaluations the subject has come up yes okay good excellent okay um Earlier today, had a meeting on the senior center, just so um, revisit the senior center very quick. The uh, town of Deerfield right now, uh, what we had been using as a senior center, um, is not being able to be used as a senior center because of um, environmental concerns inside the building, mold and and asbestos and some other good stuff. So right now that's on hold. There have been a continuation of the to-go meals and also we have a tent that's set up and there's um, some classes ongoing as well as they continue to do the foot doctor. Um, they're still holding uh, the foot doctor once a month at the uh, uh, inside the, I believe inside the town, town of Deerfield office building. So, but you can contact the senior center if you need any of those services. And also you want to go over for, they, they were doing Tai Chi, I think she was saying today, and, uh, and some other programs. So there are programs ongoing under the tent for right now. We also, um, we have a grant um, that we're working on, on a needs assessment um, that's ongoing. They were trying to uh, put together for the three towns and also the the town of Deerfield uh, also has ownership of the old congregational church next door to the senior center and uh, they're looking at renovations to that and hopefully having that in a position to open up for this this one this winter in the meantime when the temperature gets a little chillier outside um, we are, Jeff is going to contact the Sunderland Congregational Church to talk to about the potential for using the Congregational Church Fellowship Hall uh, for, for a month or so to run some of the programs there. And also, and, and Crystal, it's handicap accessible, right? Yes, there's a ramp. And, and, I, and, and that's one, one of the biggest advantage I thought it was because when we hold, we used to hold our senior meals there, so I think that's one of the reasons we liked having it there because it was a senior, mm -hmm. or I mean, ADA compliant with that respect. So, so we are looking at um, either going over into the um, fellowship hall, or there's one other location in, in Whiteley that we're looking at right now, um, so that we we when the weather does start to turn a little colder, we would have an option. Also, the senior center directors position is open there's a the ad has been out in the uh, the local newspapers as well as on on indeed.com so that's that is out there and we would uh, strongly encourage I would strongly encourage anyone that has um, uh, enjoys working with with seniors um, and has been thinking about um, a career with seniors this may be an opportune time to, to make it happen. So check out the ad and if you want, I think we have five or six applications in right now, but the uh, position is gonna stay open. We'll keep, extending, keep accepting applications until the position's hired. 
but I would strongly encourage anyone, it doesn't matter if you've been in 20 years or you just graduate, if that, that is something that you want to do, I would strongly... Let me say this. It's not planned to have any equipment in that area anymore, so if anybody sees anything, please let us know. The last, the last two things that they're going to be doing are putting a curb uh, at, by the end of the street, uh, the transition from the street to the grassy area, and then they're going to loam and seed the grassy area again. So, um, but uh, they have options so that there isn't going to need to be equipment. So that people aren't, won't be able to pull off there. Right, exactly. Um, but to maintain the grassy area. So, um, the, the rest of the paved sidewalks is just the binder course. They still have to do the, the surface layer. Um, and then they have to, uh, I think, put in the, um, the bicycle um, monitor. I think th there's going to be something in the ground so when bikes go over it, it registers with the stoplight that there's a bike waiting to, to go across the road. Um, so they have to put that in. Uh, signage line striping will happen at the end, loam and seed at the end. Um, they're probably going to go back and do the surface paving of the roadway the first week in October. Um, and they're still planning on being completed by uh, Columbus Day. So, um, they're right now they're going back and making sure all of the structures that are raised to the appropriate height um, and then they're, they're going to be doing the final paving. Alrighty. October, Columbus Day. Pretty bad. <laughs> I don't think they're going to make it. You want to take that back? Yeah, I don't see anybody else putting on money. Mm. Uh-huh. Alright. I didn't think so. It's so weather dependent. This is oh, it's weather dependent. This is the end of hurricane season. You never know what you could get for flooding and stuff. So the 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 one other thing that we're still working on with that is the uh, hurricane season. How how about how about the no? Forget it. How how come they're still cutting the road up? Where? Up on they just cut they did they had a sinkhole in the road a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I know. So that I was going to say that the one thing that we still have to discuss is there were some uh, pipes yeah. that either that, that we're talking about getting a uh, flowable fill so yeah. that they don't collapse in the roadway. And yeah. I remember the highway superintendent told them to do that mm -hmm. in, in the springtime. And then they said, oh, it's not a standard procedure. Now we're doing it. Hmm. And they also said it's, it's all in the tree belt, so if there is a sinkhole, it won't affect the road. You just throw some dirt in. So yeah, that that is the the one thing that we're still uh, having and, conversations and, and I, about. And the other day, I noticed the, one of the good rainstorm. Good thing it was a hurricane season. Over here next to Bruce Wesson's neighbor, it looked like there was a duck pond formed. I I, I let George know. Okay. I, I would hope that they'd fix that also, because I believe there's a catch basin there that they covered up with dirt. So, <laughs> um, I think there was one of the. Well, I think it was to keep sediment out, but I remember there was one uh, by Warner Drive and School Street a few weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had big rain. Yep. Okay. Um, so that's North Main Street. How, uh, do like, how do you like running a construction project? Yeah. Can they I move on to the next topic? They didn't, yeah, they, didn't, <laughs> they didn't teach you about that in uh, town administrator school, did they? No, they didn't. I didn't think so. But that's why I took the job. I'm learning yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah. He's a good politician. <laughs> um, uh, hazardous Waste Collection Day is going to be on September 25th at GCC or the Orange Transfer and the Orange Transfer Station. Uh, Pre-registration is required by the 17th. Um, the form, I don't know where the camera is, the form is on our website. You can fill it out the back uh, and return it. Um, wanted to make sure people were aware of that. Uh, let's see, what is, 
Any substance labeled caustic, toxic, corrosive, poison, flammable, warning, danger, and caution are things that you can bring. Paint, spray paint, varnish. And all this is on the website, so I won't waste time. Um, but if you have hazardous waste, um, there is a collection day. Check out our website for information or give us a call, and we're happy to. to, to I, I went, I, I've been to a few of them. I went last, was it last year or the year before? It was a year before. And, and I would say if, if you're like me, you probably have um, oil-based paint in your garage or your cellar. Um, you can get rid of that. You can do anything that you would antifreeze. How many people have you know, a bottle of antifreeze that they have no idea how, how old it is? Well, if, if you have a pickup, you just put the thing in your back of your pickup. You drive up there. They check you in because everything's done, you, and they direct you where to go. They use motor oil. Yeah, use motor oil, whatever it is. And you go up there, and they, you, don't, you don't get out of your car. You don't do anything. You just drive up. You, they pick it out, and you drive away. So it's a, in, in, and this is a truly an amazing process. And they give you a time to be there. You got it paid, the time, everything. And you tell them how much you how much you have, and it's a great thing. Just like, you know, we Sunderland is a member of the the uh, Franklin County Sol Solid Waste. If you have a rug, how, how do you get rid of a rug? You know, we used to have bulky item day. Well, to tell you, you can still get rid of the rug. You just have to go up to Greenfield Transfer Station, you pay $5 for, you pay $5 plus whatever, because you're not a Greenfield resident, and then they'll, I had a 12 by 12 rug. I went up there and it was $4, or right? I think it was $4 to get rid of, uh, in the fight, so it was $9 to get rid of a rug. You can wash machines, dishwashers, old beds, mattresses. If you have mattresses, there is a way to get rid of it pretty easily. And, and it's because we're members of the solid waste, you can go online to Franklin County Solid Waste District and or you can access it through our, our Town of Sunderland webs page. Tells you what it's right off Wisdom Way, so it's easy to get to, and um, you get steel, whatever you want, you can get rid of, and it's very inexpensive. But this hazardous waste is excellent. You have oil-based paint in your house? I don't. You're good. My I mother's did. house, maybe. Mom's house, maybe. Yeah. So good. Um. How about 120 North Main Street? 120 North Main Street, uh, everything is going well. Um, I just reached out to them today related to the North Main Street project uh, to confirm that all their utility lines and, and pipes were set before the final paving is done. Mm -hmm. So uh, they believe they are all set, but they're going to come confirm with me and... Uh, I thought they'd be a little bit further advanced. I thought they'd have structure. You'd start seeing the show of the building going up. Yep, and I think, I think our last update was over the summer, so it's probably about time, time for quarterly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll I'll find out where they're they're at for that. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. October first is a big day. Um, Tax bills, water, real estate, personal property are all due. Um, it's also the deadline for Chapter 61, 61A, and 61B applications um, for land that, that's uh, preserved for agriculture or recreation. Mm -hmm. And I'm forgetting what the third one is. Yeah. Um, 61A is agriculture. Yeah. And I, is B solar or B? Chapter 61, A and B, and, and regular. Um, and then, uh, oh, got noticed that we have been members of the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District since July, and we've had tests. Um, they've been testing mosquitoes. We have, they have not found any cases of arbovirus, which is great. Um, and the season lasts until mid-October, and then afterwards they're going to send the Board of Health an end-of-year report 
um, that I believe is going to show the locations where the testing occurred, the results of the testing, uh, those types of things. And we had talked about this. I think we talked about started talking about it in the spring. Uh, it was an article on the town meeting warrant to join. Um, we did join, and, and we wanted to see what what we were getting for it and so i think that that'll be a good indication of uh, whether or not we want to continue to be a member of the pioneer valley mosquito control district in the future but we did get confirmation that we have been a part of it and, and gotten testing since july excellent so uh and then sorry the last thing is just that uh starting this week i believe the select board is back to weekly meetings back to our regular schedule off the summer schedule um so um, do, uh, not, not that, what, what is the, what does the agenda look like? Does it look like we need to go back to week to week? Um, I would say that next week is pretty light. I have to confirm there was something on it and I'm blanking on what it was, but I know the 27th, we have the presentation for the rapid uh, recovery plan and then on the fourth we have the open space and recreation meeting so it's definitely picking up okay uh, so why don't why don't we why don't we is it okay with you crystal we'll we'll not have a meeting next week then the following week okay as long as i i, yeah, again, I, just, I, wanna... I, just, I just think it's good for us right now it's good like if if we do a better job of scheduling so we don't do a personnel committee right on top we can schedule that in the an off week you know, so. Well, we did schedule our personnel <laughs> for the 27th, which is two weeks. But that um, we could certainly reach out and, yeah. and see if they want to do it differently. Yeah, it, yeah. There's no, there's no reason for coming in to, to just have one thing. Yep. You know. Yep. And 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 most most boards usually go every other week, anyways. When is the next over under? What's that? Uh, so. The Village Center Committee is having a meeting on the 22nd uh, to get a preview of the report, and then uh, they're presenting it to the Select Board on the 27th. Okay, so that's the 27th. Yeah. All right. Okay. Great. All right. Anything else? Crystal? I don't have anything else. Good. All right, so our next meeting will be September 27th. 6.30. John, okay? All right, so... Oh, I'm sorry. There, I remember there was a... Well, I guess you can try and do it today. There, there was a, an application for a one-day liquor license uh, that was on the agenda for the 20th. Um, we did get sign-off from all of the departments, uh, Board of Health, Fire, Police, Building... Um, that none of, nobody had any issues with it. It's at the town park. It's, uh, I believe it's a baby shower. Um, so th that, that was the only thing. We had invited the, the applicant to, to come in. Yeah, no reason to. Okay. You're, uh, okay. Yeah. So I, I have the application in, in my office. Okay. So you can Good. sign that. And, All right. Okay. okay. All right. Motion? I motion we adjourn. Yeah, ooh, long night without Davey here. Yeah. They have a motion to hey, adjourn. Um, yep. Oh. You have a public comment? You look like Max Headroom. Remember yeah, Max? Yeah, well, I like that. I've eaten dinner. <laughs> what you got, Peter? I just had one question. He was, Jeff was talking about the North Main Street project. Right at the, the junction, the intersection of uh, School Street, where it comes on to North Main Street, right by the Graves Library, the curves have narrowed up the width of the road there pretty substantially, and I wondered why. Um, that is sorry. Go ahead, Peter. I was just saying because because my wife was coming out from back and the library, and she came out to stop there before she turned, and there was a car who wanted to turn in, and the car wanted to turn in, didn't want to turn in, and so she came out because it seemed like there wasn't enough room for both cars. There is, but it just it, it looks real tight, and I just wondered why. Yep, so it, it was part of the redesign of School Street um, that we incorporated into the North Main Street project because it had an impact on both streets. And I think the idea was 
it was very wide previously, wider than it needed to be. And this helps with pedestrian access. There isn't as much time spent in the roadway. It's easier to cross across School Street. Um, yeah. And I, I think that, yes, it is, I, I noticed it too, because I've been doing the same thing for 18 months. And I said, wow, that's really narrow. Um, I think when they pave up to the curbs and they pull out the barrels and the cones, you'll get another, not a lot of room, but enough room. Um, but I, I think that I, I won't speak for everybody, but I've spoken to a few people that were also surprised at, at how it felt. Um, but I, I haven't, I, I haven't know, actually experienced the same thing. Is, do you know how wide it is? Uh, I believe it's 20 or 22 feet. I think it might be 20 feet. I can double check. See how wide it is. I, 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 was, I ran into the, there must have been a soccer game here today because I ran into a bus and I could not, I had to let the bus pull out before I pulled in. So, because both of us could not, under and I understand you got the, the the cones there right now, but I would I would have thought I would have thought it would be the standard what our standard twenty six or twenty eight feet whatever that whatever that size is. So we'll we'll check we'll check Peter. Okay, thanks. I'm, just, I'm, I'm I'm sure we're not the only one. Just like the yeah, obviously you guys have seen it, and you know if by any chance it's not supposed to be that way, and it's supposed to be a little wider. Well. You know, better fixing it now than you know later on. So, um, yeah, so you know, I expect this is the way it's supposed to be, but it just seems weird. We can we can check on. We anyway, can check the, you. you can ask them on the plans, right? You can ask Adam or and yep. ask them how how wide it's supposed to be. Yep. And did somebody misread a ruler? Yep. Maybe, maybe the first two feet of the ruler got broken off. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks, Peter. All right. So we had a we have a motion. I motion we adjourn. Chris will make a motion to adjourn. I will second. Our next meeting will be the twenty seventh. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, call us out at uh, seven forty two. <laughs>